Hi, my name is Jeffrey Paul Drury, and this is my video for History 711 Development of Western Freedoms, Module 8. In this video, I will be discussing the problem of scale and how it factors into a government's ability to effectively operate and meet the needs of its population. Dr. Don Livingston discussed the problem in depth. In, course, in the course of his uh, video lecture series assigned for this class, History 711. If you've not watched these his videos, uh, I advise doing so. And I will review three of the political thinkers that Dr. Livingston considered, Aristotle, uh, Althusius, and Hobbes. Each of these men have a unique perspective on what the correct size of government should be, and we will take a look at that. Aristotle felt a state must be neither too small, uh, that it does not have enough people to perform its basis functions, nor so large that it's unmanageable. He felt that there's a middle ground which was ideal, such as the Athens of his day, which was about 300,000 people, and among those, about 40,000 voting men. Philip Krieger, in his article, Aristotle and Open Population Thinking, gives us some idea of Aristotle's thinking on the size of the state. Aristotle felt the polis cannot continue to increase past a certain number because it's difficult to run a populous state by good laws. Uh, the reason being because disorder increases as the state grows large, and good laws and good orders go together. A state of like a state like other complex things uh, have a normal range of sizes and do not function well when they are too much outside of that ideal range. And it's difficult to fill some positions when the population grows too large. Uh, he uses the example of a general in a very large militia or a town crier over a great metropolis. I'd like to turn my attention now to the political thinker Johannes Althusius. Patrick Riley, in his article, The Three Seventeenth Century German Theorists of Federalism, uh, Althusius, Hugo, and Leibniz, explains that Althusius felt that all associations of two or more people, including family, were political, and a political association is private and public. They're both symbiotic, and the people in them are symbionts. Uh, political society is made up of this view of larger and larger associations. Uh, sovereignty belongs to the associated political body and to all the members joined together in the entire associated body of the nation, unquote. Uh, the association emphatically does not belong to kings or any kind of ruler at all. Uh, rulership is merely delegated power. In Althusius' system, those who jointly hold sovereignty are not persons but corporate bodies. And at the head of uh, is a supreme magistrate. And he was for the, a state Althusius was for a state larger than Athens, but smaller than a monarchy. The Supreme Magistrate is indirectly elected by the people through delegating the right of election to a limited number of persons. Uh, Dr. Livingston in his lectures used the example of Switzerland as the type and size of state that Althusius would consider the best size. Uh, I would like to now discuss Thomas Hobbes and his political views on the proper scale and that factors into government's ability to effectively operate and meet the needs of the population. Thomas Hobbes was the author of Leviathan, uh, one of the greatest political works of all time. He wrote about social and political order, and in other words, how human beings can live together in peace and avoid the dangers and fear of civil conflict. People should 
give power to a sovereign, in, in Hobbes' opinion. Uh, the sovereign can be one or more individuals. This is in to order to avoid what he calls a state of nature, a situation of universal insecurity and fear of violence. And there's a contract between the sovereigns and the subjects. Hobbes uses the term covenant for this, and he states, only if one is uncoerced author of a contract is it binding. So the right of doing any action is called authority. So by that authority is always understood a right of doing any act and done by authority, done by commission or license from him, whose right it is, no man is obligated by a covenant thereof. He is not author, uh, not consequently by a covenant made against or beside the authority he gave. Uh, remember, Hobbes lived in the era of the English Civil War and uh, felt that subjects had a duty to the king. The state, in his opinion, can be large, uh, as large as France, and that the subjects and the sovereign owe a duty to one another. Uh, he said that a man is free when he is not hindered to do what he has the will to do. I look forward to your comments. Thank you. And may God bless you.